the wire under the insulation technique followed by subclavian venoplasty for venous access in patients with chronic leads is a new technique uh, that requires venoplasty to be implemented. Retaining access with a wire under the insulation technique is commonly employed for leads in situ less than a few months. Over the last several years, we have found that some leads remain mobile within their fibrous sleeves for several years. Right-sided leads remain mobile longer, up to four years, because the fibrous binding is shorter. With chronic leads, the fibrous tissue can prevent lead placement without venoplasty. So for example, here's a patient uh, undergoing an attempted upgrade and we could not cross the occlusion on the right side. The leads had been in for 18 months. Fibrous tissue had encased the lead and occluded the vein. Over time, the density of the fibrous tissue increases and becomes more adherent to the lead. Whether the lead can be moved depends on the duration of the implant and length of fibrous capsule. In general, the longer the lead is in place, the less likely it is to be movable. And of course, being movable is a requirement for the wire under the insulation technique. We thought that the wire insulation technique might be an option, but because the lead was in place for 14 months, we were really weren't sure. So whether a lead can be moved uh, and back into the circulation for the technique depends on the surface characteristics of the lead, the characteristics of the fibrous binding, the length of the fibrous binding, as well as the diameter of the wire that you're going to use uh, for the wire under the insulation technique with thinner wires being more likely to slide back into the circulation. And finally, the friction generated by the surface of the wire and the fibrous binding. A wire with a polymer jacket, that is the black material on a glide wire, has a lower coefficient of friction than a standard hydrophilic wire. Polymer jacketed wires, that is a glide wire, is commonly referred to simply as a hydrophilic wire, which causes confusion because a polymer jacketed wire is more hydrophilic or has less lower coefficient of friction than a stainless steel or other metal wire with a hydrophilic coating. The suture sleeve and the RV lead was released. General traction on the lead revealed mobility within the fibrous tissue, suggesting possibly less fibrous attachment at the lead tip. Accordingly, the screw was retracted and general traction was uh, added to the lead, uh, which released the tip. To get the wire under the insulation, we use a micropuncture needle and the needle needs to be placed almost parallel to the lead and you and to get the tip of the needle just under the insulation of the pacing lead. Once you have the tip of the needle under the <clears throat> insulation, you want to take a polymer jacketed angioplasty wire, for example, the Choice PT, uh, and put that through the needle and you can then advance that under the insulation at the tip of the needle. The needle is removed and you can see here we have uh, a section of the wire under the insulation. We then uh, put a stiff stylet into the RV pacing lead and advance the lead back into the circulation with the wire. And here you can see the angioplasty wire has been carried into the circulation with its uh, tip underneath the tip of the wire underneath the insulation. Now as an aside, there are cases where the lead will not advance back into the central circulation, uh, even without the wire. So you draw it back a little bit and then you find that you can't re-advance. When this occurs, you can still access, uh, 
access can still be salvaged by cutting off the connector and taking the angioplasty wire out from underneath the insulation and putting it into the stylet lumen. Once you're there in that situation, then you get femoral access and grab the, the wire from below with a loop snare, which also grabs a hold of the wire within the stylet lumen, and you pull that down, uh, and now you'll have a wire in the central circulation. So with the firm stylet in place, to keep the lead from pulling back, uh, we tug on the angioplasty wire to separate it from the insulation. And of course you don't want to pull it all the way out. And then once you get that, once it's free, then you advance the wire as far as possible down the inferior vena cava, uh, and then withdraw the RV pacing lead. So at this point, we now have uh, an angioplasty wire inside the fibrous binding capsule that was around that had previously encased the lead. To get better support we want to upsize the angioplasty wire and so we're going to use a braided hydrophilic catheter uh, to exchange the 014 wire uh, for an Amplatz extra support wire. Now once we have the braided catheter in place you can see that here we take out the angioplasty wire and put in the Amplatz wire. Despite having an Amplatz wire, we could not advance a sheath over the Amplatz wire through the fibrous tissue because uh, we wanted to add an ICD lead. So what we did uh, was took a six millimeter by four centimeter non-compliant balloon and advanced it over the Amplatz wire and inflated it to rated burst pressure. And of course you want to start uh, distal to the occlusion uh, at the anominate uh, SVC junction uh, and then do a head to tail overlap um, until, the, until you see the tail of the balloon in the pocket. So without stopping the procedure to arrange for extraction or going to the other side, uh, the ICD lead uh, was successfully placed. I hope you find this useful. Uh, we recently did a case of a patient uh, whose RV lead, their, H, their lead on the right side uh, was four years old. Uh, I always pick the lead that's been in the shortest, that has active fixation. Um, and if the lead doesn't move when you release the suture sleeve, then you can just resuture it uh, and consider other options. Thank you.